Greetings, gentlemen and ladies. In today's video, AI 3D model generation is getting pretty cool. I'm going to show you a workflow uh, that took this concept art illustration, which I also generated with AI, and then very quickly and easily converted that illustration into a 3D model, which I have now rigged up with some procedural walk. I think it looks actually very good. Good. Let me show you the workflow. I have figured out a pipeline that uh, I rather like and works really quite well for exactly this sort of thing. Now it won't work with all sorts of characters like high resolution, say Daz 3D, real human character models. It's not going to do maybe such a good job, but for certain types of games and art styles, I think it's going to do a really nice job. Okay, now there are all sorts of AI art generators, but the one that I find really useful for character creation is actually going to be Leonardo AI, and that is specifically for its real-time generation feature. What I've got in here is a robot, robotic ant. And what you can also do with Leonardo's uh, real-time generator is you can actually kind of tweak the sliders around until you find a certain art style that you like. And then what you, can, you do is you can actually create sort of consistent characters within a similar art style. Robotic ant ant. What's a robotic ant ant? Well, that's twice as good, right? Or twice as many. Uh, and, you know, change the color around, change the seed around, regenerate, but you kind of get a consistent art style. And... Of course, there's a bit more kids illustration. If you dial it back a bit, it'll get to be more of a serious looking illustration. You can amp up the anime. You can uh, increase the folk art, and that kind of makes it more like a Brothers Grimm type of, of sketch, you know, as it were, or something like that were, would, be, have, would have been drawn uh, in fairy tales of old. But you can kind of tweak the sliders around and come up with different art styles for your game and then when you're happy with that you kind of want to remember your seed remember your sliders remember all those little numbers and particulars because then what you're going to be able to do is do you know little variations of character that are going to still hold that same art style right so this is a pipeline that i've kind of figured out because you want to have kind of consistent characters in your game and as with all AI art generation, you get some variation. You just have to tweak around a little bit. But these are some of the characters that I was able to kind of quickly and easily come up with using basically the same art styles. But then, as you can see, we've got quite different looking characters. That one's a absolutely adorable some of these characters are so banging they, they just scream video game i don't know anyway let's jump next into the conversion process how do we take one of these characters and transform it into a 3d model now i've tried a few of these different websites that convert images into models and they all kind of work although the one i feel like is currently working the best and that may change as time goes on but I'm really liking Rodin by Hyperhuman so let's go ahead and actually you can generate a model just by typing in a text input if you want to but let's go ahead and take our concept art because that way we can get some nice consistent characters right let's take our concept art and upload it into Rodin here so I have opted on this nice little white ant right here He's got relatively simple geometry, antenna that are not too complicated, legs that are relatively uh, big, not too fine, I mean. Like little tiny hairs and things like that are going to be kind of problematic to generate. But if you've got some solid structure to your model, I find that Rodin does quite a good job. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Generate here. Okay, and when you generate, this is the first thing you're going to get. This is a preview. It's not going to look that good. This isn't going to be your final model. This is just a preview of what it thinks to it's, it's supposed to generate. Uh, the actual generation will come out a little bit different, typically quite a bit better. It's going to also pre-select a few things that you may decide that uh, may or may not be a good idea. For example, it thinks it has sharp edges. It thinks it has symmetric geometry. If you disagree with that, you can tell it that it might uh, maybe should have like simple geometry or smooth edges, right? So in this case, actually it does have quite a few smooth edges. I might want to help prompt it along if I don't get a good result by toggling on smooth edges, but I'm actually just going to let it do its thing with its auto detect first. I'm actually going to also toggle on the hyper, which I think, well, as it says, it takes a little bit longer, but has a, has a better time processing fine, thin surfaces. So something like antenna perhaps might uh, come out better by toggling on hyper uh, right under there. On the number of polygons, you can set how fine or gross you want your model to generate with. 10,000 is default, so I, that's what I've been using. I'm going to go ahead and click on confirm and let that generate up. Only takes a minute, pretty quick. 
Okay, now that is generated and we can actually see the polygon sides, the polygon faces, and they look really quite clean to me. If I take a look at the legs, those look right. They kind of got maybe a little bit attached, but actually if I look at the image, that seems like it's probably correct-ish. Uh, and that also, uh, you know, can be improved by choosing models that don't have sort of uh, art styles that kind of seem to combine one thing with the other. But so I'm actually going to back things up and regenerate here. Let's go and say with four mechanical legs and let's see if it does a better job of detecting that that's like an interesting little leg attachment. Aha, there we go. Now we have that attached a part of the leg which is distinctly uh, an attachment to the primary fourth leg instead of its own sixth leg. So prompting with four mechanical legs did help uh, hyperhumans rode into to know what to do. Now the next step is to generate the texture and the texture is going to be generated based off of the image that is input. So what I have typically been doing is well just kind of leaving it uh, mostly to default, sometimes I've been trying to dial this up or not. Basically, complexity and detail in PBR uh, reference straight based, based on the image that you provide it. And what I've actually typically been doing is just cranking that up. Uh, I don't know what's best. I haven't seen a massive amount of difference between the various sliders. And I've run it through the tester quite a few times. But since it is AI, you get slightly different variations each time to get. So to get consistent test results where you get inconsistency in AI each time is kind of diff difficult to evaluate. But for the most part, and that was a mouthful, for the most part, it does a pretty good job of generating a nice looking texture. So let's uh, do that. Oh, okay, there we go. That, I mean, shoot, that looks good, right? Like, there's our source reference image. There's our 3D model. Now, in order to export these to Unreal Engine, I'm going to want to choose the FBX option. I'm going to want to be on PBR Shaded. Uh, oh, but before you can actually do all that, you have to confirm that you're happy with the texture. If you want to regenerate it with some of the different settings, you can do so and see how all those different settings look. But I think that's pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Confirm, and it'll do a final generation of that preview texture. And there we go. That was actually pretty quick. From here, I will select the FBX option. If you're trying this for free, you won't have the 4K textures, but you can unlock the 4K textures. It's a pretty reasonable pricing strategy on Hyperhuman. Uh, I, they charge one credit or something per various things. And yeah, it's not really too expensive when you consider uh, how many models, 3D character models, you can get for a very very inexpensive modeling fee. It's uh, pretty, pretty reasonable. What, but what I have noticed, and you can try 1K yourself for free, but what I have noticed is those 4K textures are noticeably better. They look a lot, lot better. So you need to unlock the 4K textures. Oh, by the way, I will put the links to this Hyperhuman and also to Leonardo Art AI in the description of, the, uh, of this video. If you guys want to support this channel, whenever I'm featuring a different product or service like that, sometimes there may be some affiliate links in there, which will help to support this poor demonetized channel. Uh, kind of keep me going there, so I appreciate the support. Anyway, PBR, 4K, FBX, download. Let's bring her on over into our Unreal Engine. Okay, over in Un Unreal Engine, I'm going to drag and drop the base FBX bx into unreal engine and i'm just going to select to create materials now normally this creates materials though today it seems to be having a weird little issue where it's only bringing in the base fbx model without the textures and stuff i'm not sure i've been troubleshooting this for a while uh the other day this was working perfectly but you know what that's okay because we can easily fix this ourselves just by grabbing the textures and dragging them also into the same folder here and then we can just go quickly and create a new material and we will call this our ant material and in our ant material we will grab our texture diffuse and connect that over to the base color we will grab our metallic and connect that over to the metallic that makes sense grab our normal connect that to the normal and we shall grab our roughness and we shall connect that to the roughness and apply there we go and then we will simply assign the material to our little ant creature like so there we go we've got our ant isn't that nice i think he looks marvelous doesn't he look marvelous i think he looks absolutely fantastic um 
let's take a look at him under some lighting conditions in the game because I've found that uh, you add a little bit of lighting conditions to these models and they really start to wait you know what before we can look at him in our game I got too excited we have to actually put him in the game that that that's just an important part of game development very important uh, okay there we go here's our new guy he's bigger actually than I thought he would be but uh, I mean shoot from concept art guys from concept art to 3d model let's take a look at that concept art again okay so there's our initial concept art that we generated with Leonardo AI and then we've got our actual character in the game I mean that's good like that's good I'm impressed <laughs> you know this is rad uh, for you guys anything like me uh, one of the main struggles with game development is finding a way to create consistent characters well this pipeline may be not suitable for like realistic humans yet although give it a year it's probably going to be phenomenal um, but for sort of stylized games with uh, you know different sort of stylized characters I think this is absolutely phenomenal and you could do some really really cool stuff and just let your imagination run wild with all the different sort of art styles and characters and creatures you could generate anyway that is it gentlemen hey, ladies hope you've enjoyed this video from Leonardo AI to Hyperhumans Rodin and uh, again if you feel free to uh, click the link in the description supports this channel much appreciated and I'll see you in the next one. Oh, and by the way if you guys are curious how to turn this into an animated since it starts out as a skeletal mesh if you're curious how to turn this into a skeletal mesh sorry static mesh to skeletal mesh and then you can rig it up using Unreal Engine's built-in native skeletal rigging uh, rigging rigger there you go. So you can rig up your characters from Static Mesh in Unreal Engine. You can animate them using Procedural Walk or uh, probably by using uh, Unreal Engine's base model. If you got a human character that you're bringing in, you could absolutely do that. Uh, if you guys want to see a video on how to rig up your characters, how to animate them, let me know in the comments. And if I get enough requests, I'll make a video on that next. Okay, see you in the next one. Appreciate all your support. By the way, there's a Patreon link if you guys feel so inclined. All appreciated. Thank you very much.